You've got your CO2 cylinder and big dreams of a beautiful high-tech tank. However, there is one main component you still need, a CO2 regulator. These are the hearts of the system, as their main job is controlling the flow of CO2. But regulators are full of different features, and it can be hard to choose which one to get. So here's everything you need to know before buying a CO2 regulator. Every regulator is packed with a regulator body, a needle valve, and a pressure gauge. These are extremely important in the functionality of the regulator. If it doesn't include them, do not get it for obvious safety reasons. The first thing you need to know is the thread type of your CO2 tank. CGA320 is standard in places such as North America, while 21.8-14 is standard in Europe and Asia. For soda stream and paintball canisters, they're an M18 by 1.5 and UNF 5/8-18 respectively. Given that the other two are more common for regulators, you may need an adapter for soda stream and paintball canisters. The next decision that you'll come across is choosing between single-stage and dual-stage regulators. Single-stage regulators aim to reduce CO2 pressure all at once. The downside to this is as the tank starts to run out, they can get less stable, causing CO2 flow to unexpectedly increase. This is known as end-of-tank dump, and this sudden CO2 spike can be detrimental to any aquatic life. Dual-stage regulators have an extra safety measure that prevents this. The first stage reduces pressure from the tank, while the second stage helps provide a stable output pressure. This design provides more stable and control, making it more ideal for precise CO2 management. That being said, why would you choose one over the other? Well, first off, single stage regulators are way more cheaper than dual stage. They can provide a cheap entry into the CO2 injection field. Furthermore, single stage can work better with larger aquariums. End of tank dump will not affect larger tanks as much as it would compared to smaller setups. So if you have have a small setup, you want more control over CO2, or want to prevent the end of tank dump, you want to go with a dual stage regulator. The easiest way to distinguish the two is that dual stage regulators have an additional adjustable knob, while single stage does not. This may look like one, but that is the pressure adjusting handle, and it should not be touched or you could risk hurting yourself and your surroundings. Here are a few more features that can really enhance your setup. Having a regulator with a built-in solenoid will help turn CO2 off while not in use. Yeah, you could buy one separately, but they can also get pricey. The only downside of a built-in one is that it may be a little difficult to replace if it ends up breaking. It will also be beneficial if the regulator comes with its own bubble counter. If you have to buy one separately, please buy a high-quality one. I've had plastic bubble counters break on me just by tightening it too much. Much. There are also counters with an easy to refill hole that are starting to hit the market, as well as regulators that are more modular instead of integrated. The majority of regulators are integrated, meaning that there is nothing you can really do to upgrade the regulator itself, while modular ones have the ability to add different expansions, or what I like to call CO2 DLC. Some regulators will either have a single or dual gauge setup. The main difference is the information they display. Dual gauges give you data on the inner pressure of the CO2 cylinder, while the other indicates the working pressure or the pressure you're injecting. Single gauges usually display the working pressure, but some display the inner pressure. And knowing the working pressure is better as different CO2 diffusers need a minimum amount of PSI to work. Regulators are something that you should not cheap out on, especially given the inherent dangers of a pressurized system, which is why if you're going to spend money on pressurized CO2, you will want a high quality regulator. Now I don't want to scare you into buying expensive equipment, especially if it's your first CO2 system, but the general rule is that if it looks too good to be true, it's usually fake. Take your time to build up your funds, research regulators and their warranties, and always purchase from trusted companies. That being said, you should look at this as a long long-term investment rather than an impulse buy. As always, a comprehensive list of CO2 regulators can be found in the link below. Here's a few frequently asked questions for buying regulators. What are the signs of a faulty or malfunctioning CO2 regulator? Inconsistent, fluctuating pressure, or leaking gas are signs. However, usually this is due to a part not being tightened enough or installed correctly. Another sign is sticky or any parts that are difficult to adjust, especially when it comes to the needle valve. This could be a sign of wear and tear or corrosion. And lastly is the pressure gauge is not moving. I've seen this happen 
and more in CO2 generators. The regulator may still work without it, but it can be a little dangerous not having that information. Do CO2 regulators require regular maintenance? Yes. You should make regular checks on any seals and o-rings for wear and tear. This will help prevent any leaks. Can a CO2 regulator for a homebrew or a non-CO2 regulator be used as an aquarium CO2 regulator? For a homebrew, you technically can, but you will need to make modifications to it to make them compatible with aquarium equipment. As for non-CO2 regulators, hard no. What about for DIY CO2 systems? Well, you're in luck and unlucky at the same time. If you have a system that uses sugar and yeast or the double bottle system, there aren't any regulators available that I know of. If you're a CO2 generator person that utilizes citric acid and baking soda, you've got some options. Those generators usually come with a single stage regulator, but there are dual stage versions starting to appear. Although my experience with them is kind of subpar. My reasoning is due to the difference in inner pressure compared to actual pressurized CO2 tanks. This can cause inconsistent CO2 flow and difficulties in fine tuning. My 2 liter generator did not last more than 2 weeks where it should have lasted more than 2 months. And sometimes it might also take you more than 2 months to gather all the parts for your CO2 system. So while you wait, here's some more CO2 injection videos that you can watch.